Hello, power users. In this video, we're taking another look at the GSAP scroll trigger feature in Glue, specifically at pinning functions. What is pinning and why is it useful? Let's find out. We invite you to watch the GSAP overview to get up to speed with this extremely powerful feature first if you haven't. Link in the description. Let's take a look at our setup here. We have a container with a CSS ID of sec1, and we gave it a value of 300 view height so that we have some scrolling space to work with. Then we place two icons inside for demonstration purposes. The first icon has a CSS ID of item1, while the second has an ID of item2. Then we set up a basic animation using the GSAP tweens here in the GSAP events section in the page settings. The first tween is a standard GSAP event with a tool function. Its trigger is the container, so we will use hashtag sec1 as our trigger element ID, and its target is item1. We have toggled on event scrolling and set up the canvas to start at top top and end at bottom bottom with a scrubbing value of 1. This is all explained in the GSAP overview. Again, link in the description. The transformation for this item is going to be a translation of 1000 pixels on the x-axis. The second tween is exactly the same, but has the opposite transformation value. So it will translate minus 1000 pixels on the x-axis, and its target is item 2. Let's see what this looks like. You can see the items start animating as we scroll, but since we have a decent amount of scrolling space, the icons go out of the viewport fairly soon before they can finish their animation. There's a few solutions to this issue. The first is that we can make both items sticky to the top in the motion effects of the advanced settings tab and then toggling on stay in column. We can then work with the offsets. A better solution if we're working with a single container is to just set the animation target's position to fixed so that it's always going to be in the same position as we scroll. After some quick positional adjustments we can see that as we scroll, one item moves while the other we set as fixed doesn't. It will, however, still animate according to our tweens. However, we can achieve the same effect without touching either the icons nor the container by using GSAP pin functions. We're going to use a very simple example here because pinning can be very complex. For example, we can pin elements to other elements and so on. But for demonstration purposes, for now, we'll just show what happens when item one pins itself and item two pins itself. We can achieve this by going to the pin settings in our GSAP tweens or events and typing the same tweens target ID in the pin element field. Let's type item 1 in the pin element field in the first tween so that we can see the difference. As we can see, one item is pinned and acts as if it were fixed while the other scrolls away while it animates. If we pin this other item to itself by typing its ID in the pin element field in the GSAP tween that targets it, we see that both are acting just as we want. As soon as the animation starts according to the canvas settings, the items will only move according to the animations, but not the scrolling. This is what pinning does. But what happens when pinning ends? To see that, let's add another container and let's give it 100 view height and a color. We're also going to add a heading widget inside. Let's go back to the tweens and set both of their functions to from so that we can better visualize the effect. As expected, as soon as their animation ends, the item starts scrolling again as normal. This is because pinning, just like the other tween settings, starts and ends according to what we specified in the canvas settings. As a reminder, if we want the animation to be more slow, we need to create more scrolling space by giving more view height to the triggering container. We can see the difference in speed right away. There's simply more scrolling to do to complete the same animations. Something important to remember is that if we pin the same element twice, then all of our animations will break. As demonstrated here, where the icons are behaving strangely. So if something isn't working correctly, this is one of the first things to check when troubleshooting. This concludes our look at pinning. We believe that it's an extremely useful setting when working with GSAP. And as such, we hope that the demonstration was as clear as possible. Remember, more GSAP tutorials in the description. Thank you for watching and see you next time.